All right, kiddos, here we go. This is not the piece we're going to design. We're going to make this two by two round, but we're going to do the flat piece. So instead of being three eighths of an inch tall like this, it's going to be one eighth of an inch tall right this. And you're probably very familiar with that piece in Legos. It's a commonly used piece. I just couldn't find one here. Um, there's a lot of derivatives of that also. So once you make the two by two, you might have something like this, which is even flatter and then has a hinge set up on the bottom of it. Or you might have one like this, which has almost no thickness, but then a round kind of a nub on it or knob. Okay. Or this guy that doesn't have the two by two knobs, he just has a single centered knob, but they all have the same diameter. So the one I'm going to show you is this, except we're going to make the flat piece, not the regular tall piece. Uh, the only difference is the height. So we will open up a new part. And we're going to start with that diameter. So this is two Legos wide. And the way you can tell that is if I take a two by two, I can stick this guy right on there. And you'll tell that the blue comes tangent, perfectly tangent with the outside of the two by two square Lego. So everything on there is perfectly tangent. So we already know the diameter of this. So we'll go to sketch and uh, we'll design this guy from the top. And let's throw a circle in here. We're going to give it a diameter of two Lego units, which if one Lego unit is 5 sixteenths, this would be 10 sixteenths, or we'd say 5 eighths. Either one of those is going to give us the right diameter. And now we're going to go ahead and extrude it. Um, and like I said, if it was going to be the standard, this blue piece right here, it would be 3 eighths tall. So just for kicks, I'm going to show you that, 3 eighths, and it would look something like that. But that's not what we're going to make. We're going to make the flat version of it, which is going to be one eighth tall. It's going to look something like that. And we'll say, okay. So now we've got our base. Uh, let's go ahead and look right back at the top of this guy. Now we need to have four knobs up there. Um, so we can put a new sketch on here. And we're going to throw a circle. It's more about right there. And we know our circles, our knobs, are always 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. So 3 sixteenths. It's going to look like that. Now, usually we dimension to the outside edges. In this case, we're going to dimension to this inside center point. You don't ever want to do this slanted dimension because that's not what we're going to be able to do. You click right here, and it should be half a Lego unit away from there, which is 5 30 seconds. And then doing that same exact thing again, if I can actually click on the right things, which I don't appear to be doing. Let's try that again. From here to there. And we're going to call that 530 seconds also. Now, that knob is exactly where we want it. Now, one thing I want you to notice, do you see how the circle actually hangs over the edge just a little bit? That's right. But you'll see that'll get trimmed off. If you can see in this, the outside edge of these knobs are actually shaved off ever so slightly. So we will do that um, in just a minute. So what we can do here is we could go ahead and pattern. Actually, can we trim? Um, trim to closest. I don't think it's going to let me. All right, I paused it there just for a second. I wanted to figure something out, and it did work, which is good. We're going to throw another circle on this sketch right from the center point right onto this outer circle. Now we have two circles. We have this circle, and we have this circle. Now we can go to Trim, and you have five options for Trim. We're going to use this one called Trim to Closest. And I'm just going to select that little sliver and chop it off. So now our circle stops right when it gets to the perimeter of this. Okay, And at this point, we should be able to go ahead and select it. Oh, not that. Let's clear that out. Let's try that again. Select that. And thin feature somehow applied itself. So I'm going to uncheck that. Thin feature is not a feature we want to use right now. Sometimes if you're making something really small, thin feature is a good way to buff it up a little so it's not as breakable, um, but we're not going to use it right now. So there is our circle with a little bit trimmed off the edge so it doesn't hang off. And it only needs to come up 1 16th of an inch. So we'll say, okay, it's going to look something like that. And we're going to go circular pattern. 
our entity or our feature is going to be our knob. So we'll click that and should select the whole thing. Let's try that. There we go. Now we got it. And the direction is what it's going to spin around. It's going to click on the outside of this. And we want it spaced every 90 degrees. And we want four of them. And we should have knobs like that. And when we hit OK, we now have the top part of our 2 by 2 cylindrical object. OK, let's rotate this guy. Now, this part gets a little trickier, and I want to show you why. That's what the base of this looks like. OK, you've got a cylinder in the middle, but you also have notch cutouts because the knobs are going to need to fit in where the wall would actually be. So the first thing we're going to do is going to shell this guy. And um, we'll go ahead and apply a shell right there. 1 16th for our thickness. We're going to get something that looks like that. <clears throat> okay, now let's go ahead and put a sketch right on this face. And that's our bottom face. So let's go ahead and look right at the bottom view. Now, here's the tricky part we need to do a cutout right where a circle of this would be. So there's our center point from above. Okay, so let's let's throw a circle on here and let's give it a diameter, like all circles, of 3 sixteenths of an inch. And that's where a knob's going to be able, have to be able to fit. And you'll see it does hang over just like it did before. And so now, because we know that one is in the correct spot, let's go to extrude cut. And we're just going to cut it up only 1 16th of an inch, something just like that. I'm going to say OK. And you're going to see it removed a little slot cut right there, just like we have on the outside of these. So that's actually perfect. That's exactly what we were hoping for. But that's only one. We need four of them. So the nice thing is, once we do that cut, we can now circular pattern that cut. And oftentimes, in order to select it, you have to look at it from an angle. So the feature to cut, let me just click this and it identifies that cut extrude. And we're gonna say, okay, we wanna spin it around this cylinder and we want four of them every 90 degrees. If I click, they're gonna show up in all four corners and we'll say, okay. Now the bottom is totally compatible with what we want. Okay, we still have two more things. We're going to go ahead and put kind of a cross looking shape on the inside, a cutout. And, and I found this because this, this right here is kind of what it, we really want it to look like and probably the easiest way to do it. So let's go ahead and throw a sketch back on this front face. And let's go ahead and look right at it. And sorry, I said front top face. And we're going to put a crisscross plus sign. There's one and there's the other. Okay. Now, we do want each of these to be a certain size. And we're going to make that size one eighth of an inch in thickness. So we'll say an eighth of an inch. And we'll make this an eighth of an inch. Okay. Now we also want them to be a certain length. And I'm going to say 3 sixteenths. And make this guy 3 sixteenths also. Now my little plus sign is not looking so hot yet, but it will. So there's our center point. If the total width is 3 sixteenths, then if I make the distance from the center point to that outside edge half of that, which would be 3 30 seconds, then my little rectangle should be centered lengthwise. And I'll do the same thing here from this outside edge to here. And we're going to make that 3 30 seconds. Okay, now we need to do the same thing with the width. So we made the width of this guy. Uh, we told it to be 1 8. So we're going to have to say, well, from this size, to here it needs to be 1 16th. And same thing here from here to here. It's getting a little busy on there, isn't it? 1 16th. But hopefully you understand what I'm doing. Okay, so that's kind of a little plus sign. And now we're going to go to features, extrude cut. And as far as selected contours, we want to select everything in here. So that little plus sign. And let's just say through all. Let's open this thing up and we'll say okay.
All right, and at this point, we get kind of a little plus sign opening that looks in the ballpark of what they did. Okay, okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we add this little donut looking thing on the bottom. And that's to make sure that when knobs do fit in these four little pockets that we created, they fit up against that donut also and they're snug in there. That'll hold things into place so that you didn't have to have a two by two. Now this obviously fits snug even if the donut wasn't in the middle because they're wedging themselves into those four things. But if you look at just a single knob, a single knob also fits in there and it's because of that middle donut secures the knob into there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one more sketch right on, eh, let's put it on this face. Could have done this face also, it doesn't really matter. And we'll put a circle right from the center point out. And we're gonna make one that's bigger, one that's a little smaller. And we're gonna go to dimension. That inside one, because a knob needs to be able to fit in it, is gonna be 3 sixteenths. That outside one, we don't know. It's gonna be dictated by where a circle fits right in here. So what we're going to do is just for kicks, we're going to throw a circle right here and drop it right onto that edge because we know that's where it has to exist. And we're going to go to add relation. And we're going to tell that arc, which is already listed in here, and we're going to tell this circle, they're really actually both circles, to be tangent to one another. Now, it caused the, this one to shrink. I was hoping it'd be locked onto here, but obviously it wasn't. But that's all right. I'll accept that. And I'm going to go to smart dimension and say, actually, I wanted that to be 3 sixteenths. And that's going to make it bigger, and it's going to make the other one smaller. Okay. And at this point, we now have our donut. And we're going to extrude a little donut, that guy. Um, and I'm not going to select the inside parts. I'm going to leave that plus sign alone so it doesn't mess it up hopefully. Um, and I'm going to make sure that we're adding it. One sixteenth of an inch is correct because that'll bring it to this level. And if I didn't already know that, I could say up to surface and then I could select um, the next surface. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep it at blind. One sixteenth. And we're going to say OK. And we now have something that looks like this. Okay. And that is a compatible Lego piece. That's probably the trickiest one we've done so far. Go ahead and apply a color to it, and you are just about done. Okay, have fun. Yeah.